my life Tell me who shall I fear Hear me now The Lord is my light And my salvation Tell me who shall I fear The Lord is my strength The strength of my life Tell me who shall I fear Come on Christians Step on the enemy, step on the enemy Crush the serpent, trample the dragon Under my feet, him under my feet Under my feet, me say him under my feet Step on the enemy, step on the enemy Crush the serpent, trample the dragon Under my feet, him under my feet Under my feet, he say him under my feet Yeah Him, him, him Come on Christian, him Trample the devil, him, 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 crush the devil, him, 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 come on, him, 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 listen, plead my cause, O oh Lord, with those who strive with me, fight against those who fight against me, hallelujah, take up your sword, Lord, take up your spear, no weapon form against me shall prosper One more time, listen Plead my cause, O oh Lord With those who strive with me Fight against those who fight against me Hey, hey Take up your sword, Lord Take up your shield No weapon form against me shall prosper Christian, come now Step on the enemy, step on the enemy Crush the serpent, trample the dragon Under my feet, him under my feet Under my feet, say him under my feet Step on the enemy, step on the enemy Crush the serpent, trample the dragon Under my feet, him under my feet Under my feet, he say him under my feet The Lord is my light and my salvation Tell me who shall I fear Hey, hey, the Lord is my strength The strength of my life Tell me who shall I fear The Lord is my light my salvation Tell me whom Shall I fear Come on now The Lord is my strength The strength of my life Tell me whom Shall I fear Come with me now Jesus Step on the enemy Step on the enemy Crush the serpent Trample the dragon Under my feet him Under my feet under my feet, he's saying, under my feet Step on the enemy, step on the enemy Crush the serpent, trample the dragon Under my feet, he's under my feet Under my feet, he's saying, under my feet Step on the enemy, step on the enemy Crush the serpent, trample the dragon Under my feet, he's under my feet Under my feet, he's saying, under my feet Listen, he that dread in the secret place of the Most High Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God I will see of the Lord He is my refuge and my fortress My God in Him will I trust Surely He shall deliver me from the snares of the fowler And from the nighsome pestilence I shall not be afraid for the terror by night Nor for the marrow that fly by day nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness Nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday A thousand shall fall at my side And ten thousand at my right hand But it shall not come near me Only with my eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked Because I have made the Lord Rich is my refuge, even the most high my habitation, there shall no evil befall me, neither shall any play come near my dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over me. Oh my God. 
Hello, 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 hello. What's going on here? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, good evening to you. Why is that squeaking?
auditório de pé aplaudindo J A Another. 
soul on fire, girl. I love you, keep that name. Oh, if you were you were you were you were you were Kingdom Almighty Father, thine is the glory forever. Hallelujah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, each and every one. Good evening. Uh, we welcome you tonight one more time to thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And tonight we want to just give him all the glory. Thine is the kingdom. Thine is the power. Thine is the glory forever and ever. We say hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, this evening come to you one more time. We thank you for your grace that is sufficient to keep us. We thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Father, we ask you this evening to guide us into all truth, the truth that will set us free, free from ourselves, free from everything that is uh, besetting us and keeping us back from moving on to your wisdom and your knowledge and your understanding. So we cover ourselves under your blood this evening against all principalities, all powers of darkness, every forces, Almighty Father, that will keep us from hearing you, keep us from seeing your way you're leading us, keep us from Falling, Father, we just surrender ourselves to you, we surrender our will to you, we surrender our minds, our bodies, and our souls. We surrender everything to you to, to, tonight, and we thank you for delivering us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. 
Hallelujah. We want to welcome you this evening one more time to Thy Kingdom Come, Thy Will Be Done. And we want to thank Him because He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We have to hide ourselves behind the cross because if we do not do that, then self is going to come up all the time and it's going to expose us and then we are going to feel out of place. So let us put on the old armor and wear it, continue to keep it, keep it on, sleep in it, walk in it. Everything you do, let's keep on the old armor because you know, the enemy will come, the enemy will come upon to, upon us at all times because that is that is his duty that's his duty so we want to continue to keep on the old armor hallelujah hallelujah thank you father so we, we continue to Give him all the glory and all the praise. Thank you, Father. We bless you. Hallelujah. Your word, your word, your word. There is none like you. Hallelujah. So let's let's do a confession right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We bless you. And say, this is my Bible. It is not a religious book. It is the constitution of the kingdom of heaven. It is about a king, a kingdom, and a royal family. Today I will be equipped and empowered by this manual of the Bible that was specially designed for my life. I am about to discover a kingdom that was given to me before the foundation of this world. I am so excited to learn about my king and government from heaven, the constitution, and his laws and territory. I am so happy that I am in a kingdom and not a religion. I know who I am. I am royal because I am from a royal family. So I thank you, Yahushua, my Father, for including me in this well and written testament. I believe it, I receive it, I confess it now and always, and I say, we say, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We continue to confess and believe in His Word. Yo Elohai Shiu Kigado Elohai Kol Khadile Kigado
that will beset us from worshiping him in spirit and in truth. So tonight we want to uh, we want to go on the topic tonight. The first task of a leader is to define the core values. This is very important. Very very important. The first task of a leader whatever capacity you're in, whatever you're leading, the first thing that you need to identify is core values. And the Word of God has given us some instructions in Matthew about these core values. So we're going to look at some of them tonight. Because if you're called to be leaders in whatever capacity we are leading, we have to put value on whatever we do. Value on every single thing. Everything. 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 Because you're leading. And if you do not value what you're doing or saying or how do we uh, you come across, then people will not accept what you're giving them, right? Or they, they can accept it, but they will not see you as a, a good leader. So, the Word of God has given us some direction. So, let's let's look at it. 
some of these. Uh, we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, we're going to do a lot of reading here tonight, and we're going to study the word. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We bless you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 6, reading from verse 1. Matthew chapter 6, we're going to look at, you should do the right things for the right reason. We should do the right things for the right reason. I'm going to read Matthew 6 from 1 to 8. It said, Take heed that ye do not hurt your hands before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father, which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine hands, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, that they have their reward. But when thou doest harm, let not the right hand know what the right hand doeth. Let not thy left hand, sorry, know what the right hand doeth, that thine hands may be in secret. And the Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward you openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites, for be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, Pray to the Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which is seared in secret, shall reward thee openly. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Eight. But uh, be not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before you pray, or you ask him. So from verse 6, from verse, uh, chapter 6, from verse 1 to 8, it dealt with the things that, you, the, the things that we do, the right things that we do for the right reason. So what it's saying there, you know, in the word is very clear and straightforward. Here it's saying in the word, it's pointing out that whatever we do, we should do it to glorify the Father. We should not do it for men to see us and see our abilities of whatever we can do. But we are to do it to please the Father. All right, so this is straightforward. Let's look at another point from um, same chapters, chapter six, from verse nine to verse thirteen. Same chapter from verse nine to verse thirteen, and we will look in that we should pray God's agenda and not our own. All right, so when we pray, we should pray the will of the Father, the agenda of the Father and not of the home. So reading from verse 9, it said, After this manner therefore pray, pray. It said, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And we mentioned this already, we say hallowed means 
set apart, right? In the Hebrew, Alo, it means set apart is thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. We are praying the will of the Father. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. So we look from 9 to 13, we pray the agenda, the will of the Father, what the Father desires, his heart. And that is why we should pray about, pray that his will be done, his kingdom come in our lives, whatever we do, whatever we see, his kingdom come, is in our lives, and his will be done on earth here as it is in heaven, as it was shown to us through the word. Hallelujah. So let's look at another one, we're still in the chapter of Matthew chapter 6 and we are going to read from verse 14 for if ye therefore I mean for if ye forgive men their trespass trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you for but if ye forgive not men their trespasses neither will your heavenly father forgive you so it is saying right here clearly too that if we do not forgive men then our heavenly father will not forgive us either so we are praying Hallelujah. The relationship with the Father will make or break. Relationships will make us or break us. Right? So forgiveness in relationship is saying here that that's what we need to practice. Because it will lead a make us or break us. It will either make us good or we will just have a hard heart and not responding to what the word is saying to us. That we should forgive men as we are looking for our Heavenly Father to forgive us. So we're looking at another one. That we need to par par prioritize eternal things not temporal things right so we're going to look at verse 19 to 24 prioritize eternal things and not temporary things verse 19 says lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth where your moth and wrath and wrath do it corrupt and when thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither mud rot do it corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eyes be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. Hallelujah. No man can serve two masters. For either he will eat one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. 
you cannot serve God and Mammon. So we must put value on eternal things and not on temper, temporal things. And what we see here in our day and age, uh, men put in uh, value on temporal things. Things that is temper, that is, it doesn't last long. And they put value, more value on it than eternal things. Because the word says that the things that we can see, they're just temporal. But the things that we cannot see, they are eternal. They are eternal. They are everlasting. So the word is saying to us that we need, we need to put value on the things that is eternal. The word of God is eternal. People and their lives, their souls, is valuable. And we need to s put more import, um, stress more, and put more value on the things that matters the most. The things that are, are temporal, and they, they just last a few minutes, like the grass. The men gather it and and, 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 and and burn it. It's just for a while. But but people are valuable. The word is valuable. And when we understand the word, when we put value on the word, then we can we we, we can put value on others. Because the word says that we should love our neighbors as we love ourselves. But what is happening today is that we love the temporal things. We don't love our neighbors no more. And the reason why we don't love our neighbors no more, we don't love people, is just because we don't love ourselves. And you think you love yourself. But the word is seen that when you value yourself, first of all, when you value the word, you will value the Creator. And when you know the Creator, you will know yourself. And when you know yourself, then you will value others. And so that is a chain reaction. So we prioritize eternal things and not temporal things. So we are looking at the first thing or the first task of a leader is to define core values. So these are some of the, the core values that we need to prioritize and realize that they are eternal. They are valuable. So let's look at verse 25. In still in chapter 6, verse 25, and we are going to look at, we don't worry about the small stuff. The small things, don't worry about them. Alright, so let's read from verse 25. Hallelujah. From verse 25 of Matthew chapter 6, it says, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, or what ye shall, your body, what ye shall put on your body, or what ye shall put on. Let's read it again. Therefore I said unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on is not the question here is not the life more in, more than meat and the body than raiment verse 26 
we're gonna read down to 34. Verse 26 says, Behold the fall of the hair, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. You see that? Don't worry about little things. What are you going to eat? What are you going to drink? What are you going to wear? Don't worry about it. Your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Wow. Are you not much better than they? The fowls of the hair, the grass of the field? Yes, you are important. You are important. Okay, you have a soul. It said, which of you, by taking by taking thoughts can add one cubit unto your study. And why take a thought for raiment? Consider the lilies the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. They don't work. But they are beautiful. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not a ray like one of these. Ah. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more close you on all ye of little faith? Before all, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which is today, is, and tomorrow is cast into the river, shall he not much more clothe you? Oh, ye have little faith. Just a little. Just a little faith. You don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. Just a little faith. So the word is telling us that we shouldn't worry about stuff. I don't many times we worry. The cares of life cause us to worry. And the reason why we worry is because we don't trust the Father. He told us, do not worry what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, the things of the world, because the even does that. People who do not believe in the word, people who do not believe in the Father, people who do not believe Abba, that He is our source, they are the ones who worry about stuff. And worry is one of the things that causes sickness. See that? So when we, that is why the Bible instructs us, the Father instructs us, do not worry, because worry will cause you to sick. And they said, every sickness is because of worry, stress. So he said, don't worry. Don't worry. Because your Heavenly Father knows all that you need. I'm going to verse 34. Oh, ye have little faith. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or whether, what shall we drink? Or what all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. He knows. He knows that we have needs of all these things. That is why he's going to follow this verse now. Listen to this verse. He knows that we have needs. And this is the reason why he's telling us right now in this verse. Listen to this verse. Verse 33. He says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these things. What things? All these things that I just read here in the previous verse. 
all these things shall be added unto you. All these things, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you wear, the way you live. Yeah? He said, when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, when you seek first the authority, the ruling, sovereign power of the King of Kings, and the Lord of all lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, and his righteousness, his righteousness, right standing, right alignment with him, obedience, and his will in our lives. He said all these things will be added. Ah, verse 34 says, Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thoughts for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Hallelujah. So the word is directing us to define the core value. Of, of, of our lives and of the things that we need to put first to put value on to identify in our lives let's look at another one 33 34 32 we're going to read from verse 32. Oh, I just read it, right? God's kingdom is permanent to seek first. We must make the value, take the value, and put it on His word. Do not take the value of what is not important. Don't, don't, don't put value on what is not important. That doesn't really last. But we need to put the value upon his word and what he has to say to us. So he's instructing us tonight that we should judge ourselves before we judge others. Hallelujah. Judge ourselves before we judge others. And this is talking about the task. The first task of a leader is to define core value. And one of the core value is to judge ourselves before we begin to judge others. So we look in Matthew chapter 7. And we're going to read from verse 1 to 6. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Father. Matthew chapter 7 said, Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, you shall be judged. And with what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mat in that is in thy brother's eye? But considereth not the bee that is in thine own eyes. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mouth out of your eyes, and behold, a bee is in thine own eyes. And the Bible is speaking directly. It said, Thou hypocrite, you should first cast out the bee out of thine own eyes. And then shall thou see clearly to cast out the mud out of thy brother's eyes. Cast it out first. And now in verse 6 it said, Give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn away and turn again and rend you. So the word is straightforward here. As leaders, 
we need to understand that we cannot judge others and think that ourselves is exempt but everything that we do and see we must include ourselves because there is a big plank that is in, our, in your eyes and you are trying to take out the little speck out of the other person's eyes when you have a big fault. This is the first task of a leader to define the to define core values, the things that matters most that we need to do. And that is why the word tells us that we must worship in spirit and in truth. Because if we are not worshiping in truth, then we cannot see. We are just going to be in darkness. But when we worship in spirit and in truth, there's two ways you worship. One is in spirit and the other is in truth. So if we cannot combine those two with honesty, then we are still in darkness. Hallelujah. So if we need something, we should ask. And if we have something, we should give it. So the Bible tells us to ask and it shall be given unto to you. Right? If we have, we should give. And if we need, we should ask. Core values. Matthew 7, verse 7 through 12. Core values. Very important. Matthew 7, 7 through 12. He said, Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and it sh and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that seeketh receive it. You see that? So what? Okay. Psh. And he that speaketh and seeketh find. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. So when the Bible tells us that we should ask he said everyone that ask it receive it then we should ask and sometimes the, the hardest thing for us for you man is to ask people rather um, go and steal stuff more than ask because they think that it is decreasing them when they ask they don't want to hear no because they are going to feel ashamed if somebody says no well, how about stealing it and the police come and, and lock you up or detain you? Which one is more better? So the world is saying that you should ask. Whatever you need, ask. Ask. It, it, there must, there's two answers to it. It, is, it must be yes or no. Right? So let's not feel bad to ask. So whatever we need, if I need from the Father, he said that we should ask. Or whatever we need, we should ask. And ye shall find if you knock. And when you seek, you shall find. Seek ye first the kingdom. So when you go about and seek the kingdom, you will find the kingdom. And the kingdom is not going to church. The kingdom is not believing and baptizing and going to church. The kingdom, you're not in the kingdom when you get, um, get saved and believe and baptize. That's not the kingdom. That's believing. That he, the Yeshua was risen from the dead. Right? And he died for your sins. But that is not the kingdom. So he said to me, if you seek first the kingdom, you will find it. You will understand it. You will know how the kingdom works. Because certain things that comes from us is not kingdom. Because the kingdom doesn't operate like that. In the kingdom, 
we know how to do things. We know core values. Hallelujah. Because the Father is teaching and you are obeying to follow. Hallelujah. So he said, when you knock, you shall, it shall be open unto you. When you seek, it, you shall find. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be open unto you. Or what man is there of you? Whom, if his son has bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a snake? If he then be evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask? Huh? If we ask of him, how much more? He will give it to us if we genuinely seek with our sincere hearts. He will give us. Verse 12 says, Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Alright? The word of God says that whatever, whatsoever you do, it is coming right back to you. So we need to seek to do the right things. Hallelujah. We bless your name, O Father. We give you glory. So we need to stay true to our con conversation or convictions. We need to stay true to our convictions. And do not wander, don't drift from the narrow path. Let us stay true to what we believe, what we understand, and what God has revealed to us, and we are convicted of it. And we know that yes, there is a maker that make me and you. There is a God, there is a Father that cares for us. Let's stay true to our convictions. Let's read from verse 13. Verse 13. Hallelujah, we must stay true. You say, enter ye in the straight gates. For wide is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there and many there be which go in thereof because straight is the gate and now is the way which leadeth to eternal life a few there be that find it hmm. hallelujah it said beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Hmm. Be ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or fig of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a carp tree bred forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bear fruit, bring forth evil fruit. <laughs> Hallelujah. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a carp tree bring forth good fruit. Let me read this again. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. There is no way it can do. 
Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree that bringeth not fruit, bring it no, every every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is you down, cut down, and cast into the fire. Wherefore ye by their wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Hmm. So a uh, a uh, mango tree cannot bring forth orange. A clean mind is not supposed to bring forth corruption, dirty, dirty mind. There's no way. So the word of God is instructing us of core values. And so many times we see the mix up of all the things that is happening. And it is just a mess. Because it's not lining up with the word. It's not lining up. It's not lining up. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall know them. So whatever fruit is coming forth, that's it. That's it. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We bless your name, Lord. Let's look at another one. Stay true to your con. Oh, I just do that. Obedience to God is the only sure foundation for life. Obedience to the Father is the only sure foundation to life. There is no other foundation that is sure. The only one is when you are obedient to the Father. That's the only one that is sure. And let's look at the word here. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Oh, glory, glory to your name. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. 21 says, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of the Father which is in heaven. You see that? He that do it there, we love the Father, which is in heaven. Obedience to the Father is the only sure foundation. So only those who do the will of the Father, what he what he wants, the things that he desire to be done here in our lives, it will be done here in our lives on this earth that we are in. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, I have, we have, have we not prophesied in thy name? Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful things? So, we see here that the name of the Father is said in his words in Revelation that the name of the Father in the last days is going to be, there's going to be a fight for his name. And we can see it here happening. So, we are living in the last days. The name of the Father is very, 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 very important. And then will I prophesy, or then will I profit unto them, and then will I profit unto them. I never I profess, sorry, profess to them. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Iniquity, wickedness. Iniquity, abomination. Ye that worketh iniquity, lies, pretense. 
Hallelujah. Therefore, whosoever heareth these things, or these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which build his house upon a rock. Hallelujah. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the wind blow, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Foundation. The foundation of the word, the obedience, is life. So the rain came and beat on it and the foundation was strong because it was upon the rock, the rock of ages. And everyone that hear this saying of mine and do it that they not shall be lightened unto a foolish man which build his house upon the sand. 27. And the rain descended, and the, the floods came, and the wind blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Hallelujah. So we see here that the fall is great. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. It is so great. It is so great that it was a big crash. Great. The word said great was the fall. Big crash. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Let's take a break here, right? Come back.
Hallelujah. I love to love you more. Hallelujah. I love to love you more, Father. I love to love you more. When we seek you and read your word, get into your word, we love your word, then we get to love you more. Because the word of the Father is his, is himself. So the more we read the word, the more we study, that is why I said to study, and the more we get into the word and read it, we begin to understand him. And the more we understand him, the more we love him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We're going to look at Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. Thank you, Father. And we're going to read on verse 40. Leaders includes... Uh, I'm out of a, We're going to read Mark chapter 9, verse 35. A great leader... A greater, a great leader, or a greater the leader, greater the servant. Greater the leader, greater you have a servant heart. A leader is always a servant, but is backwards now. A leader is a celebrity now. Uh, a leader is a servant in the eyes of the Father, a servant in the kingdom. Religion sees you like you are celebrity, or you are it. But in the kingdom, a uh, leader, leader, a leader is a servant. So let's read here. Uh, let's read from verse 34. But they held their peace, for by the way they have disputed among themselves who should be the greatest in the kingdom. And he sat down and called the twelve and said unto them, If any man desire to be first, the this, this same shall be the last of all, and servant of all. And he took a child and sat him in the midst of them, and when he had taken him in the arm, in his arm, he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name, receiveth me. And whosoever shall receive it me, receiveth not me, but him that sent me. So if we want to be great, he said, the core values, if you want to be great, you got to be a servant. Got to be a servant. And if you receive, if you receive him, you don't just receive him only, but you receive him, the one that sent him, his father, that sent him. Hallelujah. So a servant... Our leader is always a servant. Leaders, good leaders, include others when they serve. Leaders, good leaders, include others when they serve. And today it's reversed. <sighs> when we do things in the name of the Father, or in the name of Yahushua or Jesus. We do it on our own and gaining or trying to make a name for ourselves. And the word is showing us here, core values, that doing things, when you're a leader, a true leader, you include others in it. Why? Because you are training them. You are edifying them. You are building them up. You are helping them not to build a kingdom 
for yourself. But you are training them as a leader in to the kingdom, to train them into the will of the Father. So a true leader include others in whatever they do. You don't do things on your own just to make a name for yourself. It doesn't work like that when you're in the kingdom, when you're in the kingdom. It doesn't work like that. You build a name for yourselves when you're in religion. But in the kingdom, we do it for his name's sake. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we are doing the will of the Father together, together. That the will of the Father done here on earth. For he that is not against us is all on our side. But Jesus said unto them, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For he that is not against us is on our side. That's it. So, if 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 we he that is not against us is on our side. So, if a if a person is casting out the the, the devil or heal the sick. The words say here, miracles, working miracles, in his name. It's not, they are not against, they are not against us, but they are with us. Not because they don't call a certain name or worship a certain way or go to a certain church and do the things, wear a certain, wear a certain clothing or whatever. The word is saying here, if they do it in his name, they are not against that person is not against us, but they are part. Is on our side. Mm. Hallelujah. Let's look at another scripture here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory. 10. Mark chapter 10, verse 13. Mark chapter 10 and verse 13 through 16. And they brought young children to him that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought him, brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. Yes, sir. Verse 16. And he took them up in his arms, the little children, put them, put his hands upon them, and blesses them. Hallelujah. So, the kingdom here, he said, if he whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, the kingdom is such a topic that is misunderstood. We gotta be humble. We got to be simple minded when it comes on to understand what the word is saying. We can't come in with our own idea and ideas and gender agenda and our own stiff necked uh, attitude and belief and, uh, and and think that we're gonna understand the word or understand the kingdom. He said here that we got to be as a little child. And it just means that we got to be simple-minded. We got to be relaxed and depend upon him. 
depend upon our Father because He is going to lead us and take us over safely. So we got to depend on His Word, depend on Him, trust His Word. And He will give us the understanding of what He's saying. If we just come in with our own set mind, we're not going to understand nothing about the Word. We're not going to understand nothing. Everything is right here. And it's all, all over. you got to know where, how to find it. So you got to study it. Don't just read it. Study it. And ask the Holy Spirit. As we study the Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. Matthew chapter 11 verse 22. Hallelujah. Matthew 11 22. Servant leaders must become childlike. Childlike. You got, we got to become childlike. We can't, too, we can't be too puffy. We can't be too Ah, uh, we gotta be like a little child. That doesn't mean that we gotta behave like a child and laughing and running over and, and acting like we like a little child that don't does not understand. That does it doesn't mean like that. It means you gotta be easy to be led, simple minded, teachable, dependable upon the source, trust. We gotta be just like a little, little child, love to receive, receive what he has to offer. Verse 22, but I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. So no matter what we think that we have, and we have it lack, there is so much more that we need to know. There is so much more that we need to understand. So much more. And some of these words here, <laughs> uh, we got us. We got. We we, pro, we we prophesy in part. The word of God prophesy in part. Right. So we got to know how to put it, find it, and put it together. And one person can't do it. One person can't do it. We can't do it on our own. While we're doing it, we got to ask the Holy Spirit to help us. Help us. Help us. Hallelujah. So a servant, a servant, a leader, a leader is a servant in the eyes of the Father. It's not what we are seeing here. You got to do this and that and that. We got to, we got to be humble like a child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. Let's look at that scripture here. Thank you, Father. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 12. We read it already, but let's read it again. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophet. So we summarize that. The law in a single statement. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you. Give it up for my boys. I'll praise your name. Because you've been good, good to me. 
tell right from wrong When I didn't know what was going on You were still good, good to me You've been good You've been good Looking over my life I can see How you've been To summarize this, it says if we we must be convinced that the word the Father has given us a list of core values, core values He has given us in His in His words. Uh, uh, there's a lot in Matthew seven and verse twelve. He said that was the law. Then the law said, therefore, all things whatsoever. Ye would that men should do to you, even so do it back to them. This is the law, for this is the law and the prophets. But he summarizes of the law in one statement. One statement, and this is it. It's found in Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 18. So the law was rigid. The law, religion, it was the leaders there 
go by the, 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 the law. The, the, that kind of law there. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But he summarizes up here. In Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18 said, Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord, Yahweh. So he summarizes um, this core value here, right here in this verse. He said, love. I said it before. Love thy neighbor as you love yourself. So therefore, if you love the word first, which is God the Father, Yahweh. If we love the word, read it, study it, love it, begin to love it, create a a craving for it then we will see ourselves in it we will love ourselves and when we love ourselves we will, we will learn how to love others but if we cannot love others then we do not love the word see this scripture is right here we must love the word and then we will love the Father, and the love will shine on us. We will love ourselves, so we, we begin to love others. If we can't love others, then we do not love ourselves. Alright, so the word is here. It summarizes the law. Love. We must love. And as a leader, first, as a leader, we put this in mind remind ourselves that is a great task at hand to define the core values that we need to exercise because the word is here the word is here and is leading us so tonight we went through we did a lot of reading tonight Hallelujah. a lot of people don't like study the word they like a lot of noise and shouting, and, and, but we need to spend time in the Word. Because the Word is what is going to heal us, deliver us, save us, hallelujah, and take us into the kingdom where the king is. It's just the Word, nothing else. So tonight you listen, you heard the Word, you would like to give your life to the Father. I want to help you pray, you could just repeat. These scriptures and the word as I help you go through and you decided that you want to follow him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. And if you have given your life to the Father already, you don't have to give him every night. Don't get saved every night. You're giving your life and you decided to follow him. You follow the word as we teach the word and read and follow on. Then you begin to love the word, you begin to grow in the word, and you begin to understand the word, and then you begin to understand who you are in him. And you pray and you seek the kingdom, and the spirit of the Father will teach you as you go along. So for those of you who need the Father right now, Say this prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, I have take off the old man and I put on the new man. Hallelujah. Now I put on the new man. I am a child of the King. I thank you for forgiving my sins and accepting me in the family. Hallelujah. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. I refuse to worry 
that are you worried the clothes that we should not worry about what we're gonna eat, what we're gonna drink, what we're gonna wear. Only the Eden do, does that. So I thank you, Father, that I'm no more Eden. I'm no more Eden. But I am a child of the King. I thank you that I am in your mighty hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming into my life and saving me. You baptize me that I can believe the word. So I give you the glory. I give you all the praise, Father. And I thank you for making me complete in you. Who is the head of my life. The head of all principalities and powers of darkness. Hallelujah. The great I am. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you. Thank you that you are my father. And I thank you for forgiving me of all sins. Thank you for baptizing me in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Fill me up now with your Holy Spirit so I can hear from you so you can teach me your word teach me how to walk with you teach me how to talk and teach me how to live in the kingdom we give you glory and we give you all the praise make me a vessel of honor Hallelujah. As I say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Be glorified. Be exalted. Be lifted up. Father, we give you glory tonight. We thank you for everything, every word that has been said and done here. We thank you for your leading and Holy Spirit. We thank you for you. Your word that you have imparted in our hearts. We thank you for the hearers that listen tonight. That a, the, the seed will fall on good ground. We thank you. We thank you for everything that you are doing in our lives. Thank you, Father. That you are helping us to understand your word. Hide us behind the cross. Shield us with your power. Continue to cover us with the globe of protection. Hallelujah. Help us to continue to hide your words and words that we may not sin against you. Teach us all to humble ourselves before you. Teach us all to be true to you. Because when we are true to you, be true to ourselves, then we can be true to others. Hallelujah. We give you the glory and we give you all the praise because you're worthy. You're worthy. We honor before you as we seek your face, seek to know more about you. And we give you the glory, we give you the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We praise your name. We give you praise. For all that you are doing even now. Hallelujah. Say 
Chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. Psalm 68 and verse 4. Sing unto Sing praises to his name. Exalt him that ride upon the heavens, crown him by his name, yeah. And rejoice before him. Matthew 24 and verse 14. Our final scripture. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nation. And then shall the end come. Hallelujah. So take heed to the word. For the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light and guide to our path. Thank you, Father. We bless your name. So tonight you hear the word. Thank you for staying up with us. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for praying with us. Praying true that the word could comfort with clarity. Hallelujah. So love is all wrapped up in the law. We gotta love. We gotta love. We gotta love. We got to love. Hallelujah. And when we love, we don't have to say I love you the love of the Lord. I always think about that. Love comes from God and if any man says he loves you and love God and he doesn't love you then he's a liar because love is of God so you know to say I love you the love of God because love comes only from God God is love so I love you I love you and I love the word hallelujah so tonight you heard a word and you would like to get in touch with us you could write to uh, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in care of choice, gospel network, P.O. Box 30016, Brooklyn, New York, 11203. Or you could email me at marytaliba at gmail.com. That's M-A-R-Y-T-A-L-A-B-A-H at gmail.com. God bless you. Yeah, bless you and keep you. And his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you his peace. And we say shalom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. To God be the glory.